Put on the beat. Uh, what's up, fight fans? Your boy Nick, Nick Cortella, MMA.com. Today, I'm crossing over into the world of Muay Thai with my man, Steven Put Him to Sleep Walker. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent, ladies and gentlemen. Just hanging in there. The guy's always doing excellent. What's funny is last time I spoke with Steve, he was 14 and 2 as an amateur looking to get into his uh, pro debut. First and foremost, man, congratulations on what you've done uh, so far as a pro, literally dominating everybody that uh, you've, you've got in there against. Thank you. Thank you so much for the compliment. I appreciate uh, yeah. that. So I, I know you're busy. You've got a family life. You've got a fight life. You've got a work life. Uh, so I'm going to just hop right into it, and I would hate to suck up any extra of your uh, time. So um, I know you personally from the last time we spoke that you're very involved uh, in the community, you know, working with people that need insurance and counseling and all kinds of any, uh, things. You're just helpful all around. Uh, you also, uh, I know, are a youth violence outreach worker and really yes. have become the, a role model, which sounds kind of funny because you're a fighter, but you've become a, a role model. And, you know, that alone has just, you know, helped kids. And uh, – and a proud father of four, so you have a, a full plate. How do you manage uh, uh, being a dad, uh, working, and training at the level that you do? It's not like you're an amateur career. You're, you know, this is as big league as you can get. How do you even manage your day? Man, I, I, if I tell you, you probably won't believe me, but it is very, very hard to, you know, juggle the two, being a father and a fighter. So most time I catch myself bringing my children to the gym with me just to save time on on, on their behalf because I know training a lot kind of take away their time. Right. Um, also, I have my mother to help me out. So there be times where if I can't bring the children to the gym because I'm running kind of late, I have right. my mother who steps up and um, also help me, um, you know, balance the, the two where she let me go off to the gym and then um, she will watch the children until I get home or else, or I just take them to the gym with me. And the gym would be like an after-school program for them where they could, you know, run around or they could hit the bag or they could play with Bill's daughter right. and different things like that. So shout out to Miss Walker for covering some time so this man, <laughs> so this man can train. Now, um, I know you yourself came from somewhat, you know, as a, a, a troubled youth and, um, you know, people to look up to and the kids look up to you, which – is a great honor, you know, coming from the same kind of background. Uh, you came from the inner city. You dealt with the same kind of struggles, poverty, stress, everything that, that comes along with it, you know, there, and there's a ton. And uh, Muay Thai kind of became your outlet to restrain, re, uh, I'm sorry, relieve the stresses of life. Um, how rewarding is it to give hope to the youth uh, using the position you're in and you came from there. You know, they made similar mistakes. You made similar mistakes as a youth, and you've done so much um, with yourself. Is, is Do you find it easier to connect with them because, like, you get it? You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing to tell somebody something, and it's another thing of lived it yourself. Right, right. And one of the reasons why I connect with the youth is because I went through the same thing they went through, and they can relate to me. So instead of me – preaching to them, I'm actually talking to them. And every time I talk to them, they nod in their head like, wow, yeah, that's the same thing what, what I went through. Or, you know, so they, they, they definitely relate to what I'm saying. And, and it's part of their life. My, my past struggle is their future struggle. And if I had a role model to show them like, hey, listen, if you go to the left, this is the outcome. But if you go to the right, you'd be rewarded and you will reap what you sow. So, my my job is to guide them. Like, hey, listen, yeah, what they say on TV, it, it, it's, it's all fake. It's a facade. It's not real. But right. if you get your diploma and you graduate, this is real. This is what you will get when you graduate. So, and and the kids grasp me because they're like, you know what? He, he's telling the truth, and 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 he he he's walking it. Because I let them know, like, listen, just because you have a record, or just because you've been in DYS, don't let your past stop you from moving forward in life. You know, your past is your past, but you always get a second chance to, re right. to you know, redeem yourself, which is that second chance is called tomorrow. So whenever there's tomorrow, you always get a chance to make it right, to get it right. 
won't it be awesome 20 years from now when you see somebody that you essentially moved in the right direction make it? That would be is that that's got to be like the ultimate the ultimate reward. You know what I mean? To, to, oh yes, that, well, to actually make well, a mark in somebody's life. Definitely. With, with every outreach worker, um, my goal is to set the kids on 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 the right path. You know, we are the jumping cables and they are the dead car, and we're here to give them life. You know, or we could be their crutches. Like you know, we'll we'll guide them to certain areas, and then once they're on their feet, we kind of like ease our way. And let them, you know, go forward. But we always, always keep in touch with them. So our, our goal is, is, is their success, in, in which is their story. So like we will help them get jobs, and once they get their job, we'll help them how to keep a job. And right. how to keep a job is to always stay professional, always be punctual when you're on time. So when when the kids check in, like, hey, I, I, it's been three years, and I'm still at the same job. You know, I smile on the inside because I'm like, wow, you know, that's a win. That's a win for it. what you did. Definitely, definitely. Sometimes we have them come back to do like youth programs so they could come speak um to the to the new kids that's coming that's falling right. like behind them. Right. So now, um since you're you're probably I, I've met you, you're probably one of the nicest and most respectful guys. And there's a million combat sports out there. Um in my mind, the Muay Thai com- community has absolute absolutely the most respect, which is a great thing. And I assume it's due to like the culture and the origin. Why do you think the respect level is just through the roof? Like you never, you will fight a guy, and while you're in there fighting, it's a fight. But afterwards, I've seen you walk out of out of the ring and sit and talk to your opponent. Like, why is the respect level so much greater in Muay Thai, do you think, than in any other sport? Well, well, well two things. I, I grew up in um in a in a church loving home. We was always told to turn the other cheek whenever someone do do you wrong, right. and so me picking Muay Thai kind of kind of connect with my kind of connect with my spirituality of, of like you know godly and like the, the church going. So it, it, it Muay Thai's basic point: listen, you don't show both, but you you give respect to your opponent, um, you know, because he sacrificed him and you sacrifice, and 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 I feel like I don't know for some reason like that sport. It's just like me and that sport is like one. Like so, anytime me and a, me and a person fight, we know that hey, listen, there's no mean grudge. This is how we feed our family. Um, you know, um, let's smile after and have a drink after the um the fight. Nothing personal. You came to do a job. I came to do a job. It's just that one of us can get our hand raised. But at the same time, there's no bad blood. And if right. you make it no bad blood, then you know you 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 you'll feel the connection with with that person. Even at the even at the stare down. You, you could kind of connect with the person. You could tell, like, they body language. Do they shake your hand after after the stare down, after the win? Um, or, you know, and you always, and you always offer the handshake. You always offer always, the handshake. Every always, time. always. And, and, and plus, like I said, it's the gender that I come from. Cool Bill always tell me, you know, bow to your opponent, bow to their, to their corner man, show them respect. If they talk trash you on Facebook, you don't respond back. You know, we're very traditional. We don't do the um, the disrespect. Just you take it out in the ring. After the ring, you go for a drink. So, Crew Bill, he he planted that seed, and like no matter what you do, you 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 just stick to the principle. That's it. You know. Right. And, and that's all I like more time. So now I know you've been training with Hard Knock. That's your spot for over three years. Um, in the middle of your camps, though, do you ever do you tr- do you cross train at any other camps, or do you just kind of stay at home base? Now I, I stay at home base, but um, this camp I stepped out like twice. I went to SAF um, kickboxing to right. you know to spar with Doomsday, and also I went to um, City of Tong to spar with Chip. So I really just stepped out for two times just to spar, but it was never like to get any bad work. It's yeah, just just to, just to get some different, different looks. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it was. So this came what was that, but I mainly stayed home for the whole time I've been training. Only stepped right. out once, say twice. So now I, I want to go back real quick to your last fight, Lion Fight 40, which I was lucky enough to be at. Um, and you faced undefeated Canadian prospect uh, Cole Fessner, who came into the fight ready to go, had upset on his mind. He really kind of dominated the first round, nearly finished him. Uh, less than halfway through the second round, it, it was, you know, just handling business, PKO. Um, 
did that fight play out uh, the way the way you thought it would? Did everything just happen the way it was supposed to? In in, in some ways it did. Due to the fact I was listening to my corner man, my corner man kept on yelling that you know he's going to keep coming forward and use my jab or or go for the body, go for body kick. So I was listening to Jake as Jake was saying, go for the body, and I also listened to Bill as he was saying, body shot, body shot. So when I heard body shot. I went for, you know, a cross to the stomach, which right. was a liver shot, to yep. a hook. But I missed the hook because once I hit him in his liver, he, he curled up. But like I said, I was in tune with my cornerman from from um from my head coach to Jake saying, all I kept on hearing was body, body, kick to the body, kick to the body. But my reaction was, you know, I'm going to go for a liver because his hands was up high. And um I, I, I went for the kill. But um I, I tip my hat to Coach Fisner. He, he's definitely a good fighter, but I think I was more explosive. And then yeah, I, I got to say, man, in all your pro fights, e- even at um, you, your fights look flawless. And I can tell you from media row back into the first row of the crowd and the VIPs, when you come out, the chat you hear behind is, oh, this is going to be done in the first round. Don't play. <laughs> People are just so in tune with the, with your game plan, and you go, you're not afraid to go after it. So, I mean, yeah. I, I tip my hat to that. Like, I – I kid you not, all you hear when you come out is, oh, here comes a first-round finish. And people just bank <laughs> and bank on it. So that's that's a good, like, that's a nod to you, man. People are just like, yeah, he's, you know, right. top bring flight. Excitement to, yeah, I bring excitement to the fight. Because, you know, heavyweight, like, everybody loves a heavyweight fight because it's nothing but knockout. So, but um, that knockout was so quick. I don't think nobody saw the, the liver shot coming because it happened so fast. Even if you watch it on camera, you still really don't see where the liver shot punch comes from. If, if you ever go back and watch the fight, it happened so fast. I was just yeah, so. You know how you could see it when they play it in slow motion. <laughs> you're right. You're able. You are. You're able to see it in slow motion because we go back. You know, after we see the fights, and you know, we yeah. write them up, and you got to see like, wait a minute. I know something happened, but I have no idea what it was. Right, so now right. coming up this weekend, April twenty first, mm-hmm. um, another dangerous opponent. That's all they give you, right. dangerous guys. At this point, is uh. Oliver Faircatch for the yeah. Lion Fight North American Super Cruiserweight title. Um, I know I, I know that you love the fight, and, I mean, everybody uh, that's behind you has nothing but victory uh, set in your mind, in their mind for you. So far to the point that when people knew I was interviewing you, they wanted me to ask you, well, after you win this belt, do you have anybody next in mind? Or are you not, you're not thinking, mm-hmm. or you just stay thinking about the task in front? I'm just thinking about the task in front. Um, I, I, like I always tell them, I don't want to toot my horns. I don't want to, um, you know, be that be that person that, you know, like think I'm untouchable or bulletproof. So whatever life I set up, um, it's my job to go in there and, and, and get the job done. So there's not really nobody on my radar. Um, but whoever they bring, um, I'm, I'm willing to, to, to fight. But I know the gentleman, Oliver um, Fairtex, he, he looks like he's a very, very tough guy. He's definitely a kicker. We both lefties. Um, I know he has something to prove because, you know, he trained in Thailand for a long time. He's still in Thailand every week right now. Um, but um, my, 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 good, my game plan is to, you know, push the pace on him because most high fighters start off slow. So if if I could, you know, do my one two in in the beginning, you know, um throw some bombs but still keep my heart rate at a at a good pace, right. I should be able to um bring it to him. Yeah. Well, I can tell you you don't ever have to boast or talk because the army of people that follow you, they do it for you. You never have to say <laughs> a word. You can just be humble and keep it moving. Now here's an interesting one. Uh, I mean, you're you're very successful in Muay Thai. No, nobody. There's nothing anybody could say. Would there ever be the possibility of you transferring into MMA? Me, me right now, I wouldn't. But I would definitely transfer to K1. Oh, um, there you go. Due to the fact they got some big guys in K1, um, right. and also it'd be, it'd be a good experience to, uh, you know, to. To, to, to test my skills without the clinch in, in K1. So right. um, my, my, my eye is on K1, you know, and also traveling, like, to different places that does K1 um, tournaments and K1 fights and stuff like that. So that's what my eyes. MMA, um, real, 
I'm, I'm just going to keep it 100. That's, that's, that's not me. That's, that's not my field. Um, and that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have to start all over, you know, and, and, and work my, my different muscle memory because I've been in the game for four years strong without never once sprawling or doing jiu-jitsu. So it, I know with that come injuries and stuff like that. So it, it's something that is not really on my radar. One day at a time. We'll take it one, one day, day at a time. time. So one now, time. so now leading into your career, um, again, with everything you've done already in a short period of time, is there any one fighter that you remember that stuck out in your mind that was like the inspiration where it's like, man, I, I'm thinking I'm going to pursue, you know, combat sports and here you are. Was there any, any one fighter you could pick that you were like, this is my guy like, that yeah, you looked um, up to? Yeah, it's it's about three of them. It's, it's Kevin Ross, Joe Schilling, and uh, what's his name, Manoff. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, you know I, Manoff. I think, they, they, I think Joe Schilling's on everybody's list. <laughs> yeah, like they all have the same similar background, like I have, like especially with Joe. You know, coming from like like a poor neighborhood or um, a struggle family. Right. You know, being being in in, in detention facility. You know, I, I was like that myself. Um, Madoff was it was like similar to the same thing. Getting into a lot of fights, or um, you know, I know he got bitten by a snake, but I never got bitten by a snake. But all, all these guys <laughs> had something that I can relate to. And Kevin Rock, he's just very inspirational. Especially I be I follow him on Instagram. I listen to his quotes. Sometimes I, I hit him up on Instagram, direct message him. He responds back, and and, and it feels good to like, oh wow, um, this gentleman is not um, stuck up. He's definitely like. A, a people person, you know, so he keeps it real. So I, I like Kevin Ross. Well, you're a people person too. I see oh, you, definitely, everybody. Definitely. Yeah, you're. So now I, I'm digging a little bit further back. So you had your amateur career. Uh, right before you signed pro, though, uh, you ended up signing with Prime Elite Management. Yes. Four, four fights, four fights into your career, and you're already at a high. Uh, the biggest Muay Thai title you can get in this country. You're, you're, yeah. you know, that's it. There's nothing left. Um, what actually sold you? Because there's probably a million management groups that wanted you. What sold you on Prime Elite Management? And do you think their assistance got you to this title shot faster? Well, Prime Elite Management been around for a while. He's been he's been um, managing Julio, so they used to always see what he do with Julio and stuff like that for making banners, to shirts. Right. And just, you know, keeping in touch with Julio and things like that. So he always used to say, hey, whenever you go pro, I would like for you to be on the team. And then, um, I, like, he kept on coming around, getting familiar. He gave me a couple of custom-made shorts and and um, some shirts and different things like that. And, I'm, and I um, I asked the doctor, hey, would you mind if you manage me? And Bill said, yeah, he, he's a good guy. He could get you fights and stuff like that. So Sean, Sean just had that. That, that given spirit, like, you know, like, if you do good, he do good. You know what I mean? I don't really see, like, a slime ball in him, but I, I no, see, like, not at all. his attention I, I is just... very, very, very good, and he cares about my well-being. He always check up on me, and I'm like, you know what? I'm kind of glad I, I picked the right management. Yeah, and he manages other fighters, and I've dealt with him in the past, and he's always been – he just keeps it 100 all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just what it is. So now – I, I thought this was kind of cool. So your sponsors, you're sponsored by Aqua Heavy Bag, uh, Cryotherapy West Roxbury, Primed and Ready Meals, and Wind Sound, which is kind of a perfect combination if you think about it. You have proper nutrition, proper recovery, proper training gear, and a great way to listen to your beats while you're turning in a hard a hard training session. session. Okay. Um to just blanket them all at once, what message would you give to your sponsors for the support they've given you so far in your career? I, I, I just just love for all the sponsors from from Win, it's a covered um, therapy in West Roxbury to Prime Lady Mills, and um, also to um, um, Aqua Training Bag. You guys are doing amazing work, amazing work. Um, the person I am now is because of you guys. Like I give you guys all the credit from prime meals and ready, you gave me the fuel to be able to, you know, kick faster, to be able to kick up my training. Um, right. Kyra therapy, you, you gave me that that massage that I need, you know, for my uh, my muscles to, you know, get the swelling down. And um, 
and, and things like that. And for wind sound, oh man, I, I love I love his headset. It's the fact like they they waterproof, so like whenever I sweat, it, it doesn't mess up the um the headphones and stuff like that. And they like stick to your ears, so I could like do a bob and weave and not have to worry about my headphones flying yeah. off of my. It's head. really perfect. So, you have like definitely. the perfect sponsors. You got everything covered. <laughs> so um. Now I want to kind of give you a minute. Uh, we covered the sponsors and your management. Uh, anybody else that you'd like to thank? It could be anybody you want. The floor is yours, man. Okay. Uh, I would like to thank um, Crew Bill, along with everyone, some coaches, the teammates at Hard Knocks, Muay Thai. I also want to thank Prime Elite, Prime Therapy, West Rockley, and Aqua Training Guys, and Prime Ready Mills, and Eugen Sound. And but definitely, I really want to give a big shout out to Scott Ken. And Scott Zer for, you know, giving me that chance to show my skills on, on one of the biggest promotions in the world and just really want to tip my hat to them for them believing in me. And, um, you know, and right now they're going to watch me grow. And it's just, once again, just thank you, Scott Ken and Scott Zer for the opportunity. Also, they are great guys as well. So uh, Definitely. Uh, as for me, um, anything going on with Steve, uh, I'll be doing updates on him. I'll be there covering his fight uh, April 21st, Foxwood Casino in Connecticut this Saturday. You can also give me a follow on all social media at Nick Portella MMA. And uh, Steve, honestly, my friend, uh, I want to wish you all the best of luck. I'll be there in the front row cheering for you. And uh, I'm hoping you come out with this W, which if history proves itself, uh, it should. Definitely. And Nick, one more time, I just really, really want to thank you also for let me use your platform in, in a positive way to let people get to know who I am, who is Stephen Walker. And, um, if it wasn't for you, I'm, my voice probably wouldn't even be heard right now. So I really want to thank you for the opportunity. I hope you keep the good work up, Nick. Uh, well, you always have an open door with me, sir. You know that. And uh, your voice will definitely be heard after today. Um, and, again, I will absolutely see you next Saturday at, uh, at Foxwood. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Thank you so much, Nick. All right, Steve. Hey, you have a great night, my friend. I'll let you know when this is posted, and I'll make sure you get it. All right. Thank you so much. All take right. Care. Take care. Bye. Bye.